Chris Mitchell. Thank you everyone for, uh, for Pat for inviting me. Uh, I'm Chris Mitchell and I'm running really to bring common sense solutions to Tallahassee. And I'm going to be fighting for education reform, uh, fighting for a transportation system that works and make sure that there's equality for every single Floridian in the state. Now, there's a lot of issues, and we all know there's a lot of issues that are going to be in front of the legislature. But I'm only going to talk to you about two. Uh, one issue I'm going to talk to, and, and me and Chris are hand on hand on this one, is education. It's the main reason I'm standing in front of you, is because our education system is in a crisis, and we need to address it. And I'm going to go through three points with you real quick on what I would like to see done within this state. The first one is early childhood development. It's key. It's key, and we need to make sure that we address it. All right? There needs to be three things involved in our early childhood development. One, we need to have community involvement. All right? Because not every child has a traditional family anymore. I was raised by a single mother. I was, I was fortunate enough that I had family and, and a supporting cast to be able to raise me to, to the man I am standing in front of you. So the community needs to get involved. We need to have efficient school system that is able to educate our children appropriately. So then you can read, write, and really think for the jobs of the 21st century. So we don't fall behind anymore when it comes to uh, when it comes to sciences and math. And then lastly, we need a strong family foundation and supporting cast for our children. It takes a whole effort to make sure that children are ready to go by the time they get in the kindergarten. They must be ready to learn, meaning they must have a capable healthcare system. They must be able to uh, attend class and not be sick. Uh, they must be able to comprehend uh, what what the teachers are trying to explain to them, and then, as a community, we we make sure that they have the resources to be able to prosper within the system. Now, for many of us, I understand that you hear all the time that family it's always it always relies on the family, family, plan, family, which I to some point I can agree with that. But a child raised by the village, I think, is better at the end of the day because we all have an invested interest in making sure that children prosper in this state. The second thing I would do right off the bat is scrap the FCAT system. It's not working. And every day, I mean, every session, every session, all it is is a political handicap that Republican leaderships and even a few Democrats won't take a stand on for political reasons. I have no problem taking a stand on it. It's not working. Our students should not be spending a quarter of a year learning how to take a test. All right? Our teachers should not be spending their time and resources, and limited as it is, to teach to a test. We need, now with that said, we do need to make sure that our schools are held accountable, that we, that we can measure the progress of our students, but the FCAT system is not where it's at. And finally, I would address the one out of four children that do not graduate high school in this state. I think it's disgraceful and we need to do something about it, not only as a party, not only as a community, but as a state, all right? One in four children. So what I would, one of, one of the solutions I would come up with is making it a requirement for individuals that decide to drop out of high school, all right, require vocational training, all right? Because statistics show us that high school dropouts are more likely to commit a crime and end up in a correctional institution, all right, at the taxpayer's expense, all right? We need to address this problem because as a society and the way it's set up for us, we have to make sure that individuals are able to provide for themselves and their families. And if we're not giving them the tools to do that, then we're hypocrites when we blast them for living off social programs and not being able to get a job. We have to hold ourselves accountable. We have to take a look in the mirror first and challenge ourselves in the hypocrisy that we stand in every day. The final thing I want to I want to talk to you about before I take questions is I want to address this as a party and where we're at as a party. Okay? We need progressive leadership in this state and in this party. We can go we can no longer nominate our candidates and support our elected officials if they're not going to stand up for the core values of this party. The time is past, we can no longer afford it, our children cannot afford it, all right? We need to make sure that we have progressive leaders that are willing to stand up when they see an injustice, that are willing to stand up on the floor of the House in Tallahassee, 
and say this is wrong and this is why, no matter what the political currents are at the time. We can no longer afford it because we don't have the majority in, the, in Tallahassee, unfortunately. But yet, every time I turn on the news for the last eight months, I see a minority party in Washington, D.C. dictating the message. All right, And it took one congressman from Orlando to stand up and put the Republican Party on the defense for the first time since President Obama was inaugurated. Yes. And it's time that we have more progressive leaders take that type of stance and take that position because if you're not going to be part of the, if you're not going to be representative of the Democratic Party in your community, then you need to exit left stage. Mitchell2010.com, uh, where I stand on other issues, and if it doesn't get addressed by your questions, um, Mark? Industry on the table to gamble with, and over a million Floridian jobs. I was born and raised here, and I'm a, na a native tan uh, Tampanian, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tampanian, and. Uh, I'm not sure why you say that. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I've convinced myself. But, but, I, but, but I, I've always enjoyed what Florida's had the offer. You know, we, as, we, as, we don't have the state income tax, okay? So we live off the land, all right? This is all that we have. Okay, I was raised here, born here. I want my family to be raised here. I want them to enjoy the beaches and the and the and the environment just like I was able to, and just like a lot of us have been able to. And we need to protect our shorelines. And I'll be one of those people standing up there, even as a candidate, if I have to vote to Tallahassee and knock on as many doors as possible to make sure that this does not happen because it would be the worst mistake we've ever made. Yeah. Sir, I don't know your name. Chris, um uh, there's going to be a referendum, there may be a referendum, right. one cent sales tax for transportation. Right. If someone came to you and said, no taxation without consolidation, what would that mean to you? Well, no, no taxation, not another penny more until there's consolidation. And the consolidation we're talking about is we have a $55 million bus system in Pinellas. Right. We have a $55 million bus system here. We'll have a separate rail system here, mm -hmm. and then eventually a separate rail right. system there. Right. So what we're saying, I thought, to bought it was to bring all this together. So until... Well, I, th back I think to it has to be a regional, uh, a regional plan. I think we have to do it as a region, because a lot of us so, still, you know... I, you know so would a lot you of be us supporting consolidation before taxation? Well, I think it needs to be two prong. I think we need to we need to do it as a region, okay? And we need to get the the county commissioners, the county planners together, and to plan like T. Barta, so that we have a transportation system that produces that that entices the the commerce in our system that creates job growth. I heard a statistic that Charleston ten years ago, who took the federal stimulus money that we did not act on. Charlotte, Charlotte. Charlotte sorry, Charlotte. 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 Okay. Charlotte. You know, they, their economic impact was $2.9 million, $2.9 billion with the B, and we're, we're falling behind the curve, all right? Now, to your sales tax, I'll answer it straightly. We, we have to pay for it, all right? So it's got to be an investment in the community. It's not, I don't consider it a tax. I consider it an investment, all right? We want to make sure that we are investing in the infrastructure so that we are able to, one, to create jobs now and entice companies to come to our area and then also to reduce our carbon footprint. It also helps the environment. And I think that we need to take steps and we need to take steps now. And I hope that there, Jeff Atwater, who is a Republican, I know, but he wants to have a special set, a session come December, and I'm in support of that so we don't lose federal stimulus money for the uh, sun round. So, 
Okay, did I answer your question? Or? Well, the, the question was consolidation first and then taxation, or taxation and no consolidation. Yeah, but it, it's not a debate. Right. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's got to be a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you very much. Okay. Okay.